Hi there, everybody. My name is Jeremy Krug, and welcome to my channel. This is the place for all things AP Chemistry and Honors Chemistry. If you're new here, take a look around, check out the playlists. That's where the action is. If you want to learn and review as much chemistry as you can, make sure you subscribe to my channel so you don't miss a thing. And if you find this video helpful, please smash that like button. It really helps out the channel. Thanks again. In this video, I'll be showing you how to write answers and essays for free response questions on the AP Chemistry exam. We'll be looking at the different types of questions and how to write your answers. If you want content review and practice, my Ultimate Review Packet has everything you need and more. The link is in the description below. The free response section of the exam will have seven multi-part questions. Questions 1 through 3 will be longer questions worth 10 points each, drawing their content from several different units of the course. Questions 4 through 7 will be shorter questions worth 4 points each, each one focused on just one or two of the units in the course. Every question on this exam uses a very specific action verb or, or task verb that means something very specific on the exam. I took the free response sections of the AP Chem exams from the last few years and analyzed the task verbs on every single question, looking for the task verbs to see what students were asked to do on the exam. Here are the different task verbs that students were given. We're going to analyze these verbs and discuss what you're expected to do when you see these on the exam. About 20% of the free response question parts from the past few years involve these action verbs you see here. Identify, write, list, circle, draw, complete a Lewis diagram. For these task verbs, you just have to know the answer, provide the information, and move on. There's no reasoning required, no explanation. Just give the answer, and if there's any writing at all, it might just be a couple of words. Based on the past few years' data, you can expect to see about eight or nine question parts with these action or, or task verbs. Once again, if you see these words, just give a quick, direct answer. Now, about 30% of the question parts from the most recent year's exams told students to calculate. When you see the word calculate, you'll be working a problem. You might be solving a stoichiometry problem or using an equation to plug and chug. Remember that for any calculation, you have to show your work. That means that if there's an equation, it should be obvious which equation you're using. And you show your steps, show your work. For any question that says calculate, there should not be an answer that just magically appears out of your calculator. It should be obvious where that answer came from. And your answer should have appropriate units. Pretty much every measured quantity we use, except for equilibrium constants and pH values, have to have units. Remember to give your answer with a reasonable number of significant figures. Now, as a reminder, this is a chemistry exam, not a significant figures test. A good rule of thumb is, however many significant figures are in the numbers in the problem should be the number of significant figures you use in your answer. If there are different numbers of significant figures in the problem, always go with the least number of significant figures. And if you're not sure how many significant figures to use, just use three. That will be within the level of tolerance for any calculation problem on the AP exam. Expect to see about 12 or 13 questions on the free response section where you have to calculate. About 20% of the question parts say justify your answer. Sometimes the question asks you to make a claim and then justify your answer with a calculation. So on a question like this, you'd need to answer the question, then use an equation or calculation to show why you answered as you did. Sometimes it'll be in the form of giving reasoning or some sort of relevance as to why your evidence makes sense. But justifying your answer is usually more than writing just a couple of words. Expect to see about eight or nine question parts that say justify. Once again, this might be a calculation. Sometimes it might be a short essay. About 13% of the free response question parts say explain why or explain your answer. Sometimes you're asked to make a prediction and then explain your reasoning. 
For any question that says explain, I would strongly recommend using the format of claim, evidence, and relevance. Let me tell you what I mean by this by using a different type of example. Let's say you're an attorney and your client has been accused of robbing a bank at 1030 in the morning. Now, when you make the case to the jury, you do these three things. You make a claim, you give evidence, then you give the relevance. First, you make a claim. Your claim is that your client is innocent of robbing the bank. Maybe the evidence is that your client has a credit card receipt for the Burger King 20 miles away. The bank robbery took place at 1030 and the time on the receipt is 1035. Then you give the reasoning or what I like to call the relevance. Essentially, this tells us why we should care about the evidence. Why is that evidence important? This is where you tie the claim to your evidence. Your relevance is that your client could not have robbed the bank because it's impossible to travel from the site of the bank robbery to the Burger King 20 miles away and order a hamburger in five minutes. This is what you need to do when you're explaining on the AP Chemistry exam. You make your claim, you give evidence, and, and then explain why that evidence is relevant. So for example, if the question says, which atom has a greater first ionization energy, fluorine or bromine, explain your answer. First, you make your claim. Fluorine has a higher first ionization energy. Second, you give evidence. Fluorine has fewer electron shells than bromine. Finally, you give the relevance. This is where you close the deal and say why the number of electron shells matters. Since the outermost electrons in fluorine are closer to the nucleus than they are in bromine, the Coulombic attractions are stronger between fluorine's outermost electrons and the nucleus, requiring more energy to remove them. You don't need to write multiple paragraphs. With a lot of questions, this can be done in a sentence or two. So when you're asked to explain, make a claim, give evidence, then give the relevance. Expect to see five or six questions on the free response section asking you to explain why. About 5% of the questions on the free response section will say determine. Usually, questions asking you to determine are accompanied with a data table or a graph. It could be a problem where you need to show your work, or it might be a case where you just read the graph and give an answer based on the data. Expect two or so questions to ask you to determine something. Finally, about 12% of the free response parts are miscellaneous questions. I call these one-off questions because there aren't a whole lot of them and they could be just about anything. For example, these questions say things like, fill in the steps for a laboratory investigation, or what is, or identify the error, or what happens. Hypothesize an experimental change. So for these questions, you just provide the information and move on. You generally don't have to give any explanation or any rationale unless the question specifically asks for it. Expect to see about four or five of these one-off miscellaneous questions. The AP exam can be intimidating if you're not prepared, but as you understand what the exam will be asking and the types of questions you'll be asked, you'll be better prepared to shine on the big day in May. And don't forget that if you want the best AP Chemistry content review out there, along with review videos, full study guides, practice questions, and two full practice exams and solution guides, then head over to ultimatereviewpacket.com and click on AP Chemistry. Thanks for watching, keep up the good work, and I'll see you soon.